Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. I'm in the shop today using the laser. I've got three quick projects that I'm going to do and I have quite a few tips and some tricks that I want to be able to show you. Now this is one project that I did today and this was at the request of all of you guys. So I want to get started showing you these three projects and the tips and the little tricks that I want to show you to make this even easier to be able to engrave in your shop. The first project is a simple nameplate that's going to go onto the back of that epoxy resin project. And this is just straight out of the art library. The other two projects are these two right here. Again, you guys have suggested that I put the names of the items that are in these boxes. So that's what I did today. And I pulled some graphics from the Google images to be able to make it just a little bit nicer. And that, quite frankly, on the first project was nothing but an afterthought. And I'm going to show you how to do that also. In Lightburn, you have a section that's called an art library. Well, I do mine a little bit different. I actually save my art library on a thumb drive. And these are the power settings that I'm going to be using because I know that you're going to be asking. Safety first. Safety is always a priority. If you have multiple people in a household, you need to be able to have your work area where the laser is protected. And this is the way that I do it. The shop doors are closed and the green light is on when I'm not using the laser. When I turn the laser on, I have the red light and that says to people, do not enter until you have glasses on. As far as this sign, I made this sign several years ago when I first started using the laser. This is the same piece of plywood that I used to cut out the keyhole uh, plates for the back of that epoxy resin claw. The laser that I'm using today is the Sculfin SF-A9 laser. Now this laser has the option of being able to use it as a 20 watt laser as I'm doing today or you can also switch over and use it as a 40 watt laser. With this material being 1 8 inch thick, one pass is all that's needed even on the 20 watt setting to be able to cut this nameplate out. Good ventilation is a requirement. You can see the smoke coming out of the back of this laser because I do have ventilation that's pulling all of that smoke out and away from the laser itself and you need to have a well ventilated shop area and if you could do this with the windows open or the doors open that would work even better but you need to have a good ventilation system and I've shown that to you before in previous videos. The next thing I want to talk about is how I use the laser. I do not home the machine. I use in Lightburn what's called the current position which means quite frankly I did not home the machine and I'm not using the absolute coordinates. I can actually position the laser anywhere that I want it and it's going to recognize it as the current position. Now that that nameplate is done, I'm going to grab some of the Starbond 5 minute epoxy, mix up a little bit to put on the back of this plate and put it onto the epoxy resin project that I did just a couple of days ago. And just as a reminder, I do have a link in the description below as an affiliate link for the Starbond glue. It does not take a lot of glue. All I want to be able to have is a thin coat of the glue. Now this is the five minute epoxy so it doesn't take long to be able to set up. So I'm just going to thoroughly mix part A and part B and then put a thin layer onto the back of that nameplate. I use the dowel rods to be able to attach the keyhole slots but it's not necessary on the nameplate. This epoxy will hold just fine and the dowel rods are not necessary for this part. So after I have a thin layer of the epoxy onto this nameplate, I'm just going to put it right down onto that styrofoam. As far as the alignment, it's just a matter of looking to be able to see what works best. Since there are no straight edges on this epoxy resin paw, you're just going to have to line it up visually. The one thing that I want to do is align it in reference to the keyhole slots. I can do that. At first glance, this looks pretty good. But what I want to do though is get it even closer if I can by aligning it where it's parallel to the keyhole slots. To do that, I'm just going to put the straight edge up by the keyhole slots and then with the tape measure, measure the left side and the right side of this little nameplate 
and I can make the adjustment. And in measuring this, I was less than an eighth of an inch off. I think I did pretty close, just eyeballing it. The next nameplate that I did was this sharpening angle fixture, a little sign that goes on the top of the box. This was real simple to set up in Lightburn. I just set up a rectangle that was two inches by four inches, and then I did an offset of an eighth of an inch outward to be able to create that heavy line around the outside. Added some text, and I was ready to engrave it. To set up the laser, I did raise it up on a couple of the two by fours just to get the height that I needed so that I did not have to take the box apart. And then I marked the center location of the box itself and then just push the laser over in place. Now I made sure that it was aligned directly in the center and of course I made sure that the box was parallel to the sides of the laser itself. Once again, using the current position that is a setting in the light burn, I can literally take the laser and slide it and move it exactly where I need to be. So I can position the laser head directly over the center point of the box and then using the framing tool, I can frame this project and see exactly where it's going to engrave. I'm happy with the actual setup now. I've verified it by framing this twice. So I'm ready to hit the start button and be able to do the engrave. So I'm going to grab the glasses and get this project engraved. Even though this laser has a shield on it that will help protect your eyes, you still need to wear the glasses. So anytime that I'm in the shop, whether I'm looking at the laser or not, I'm going to be using the glasses because this laser throwing off the blue light will scatter that blue light throughout the entire shop. You can see it in the video itself, the blue light on reflecting off of the box on the side of the machine, and quite frankly, it does scatter throughout the shop. So please, wear the glasses at all times, whether or not your laser has a shield on it or not, as you see that this one does. Do not assume that your eyes will be protected just because you have that shield. Wear the glasses. As far as the settings on this, I have the speed set at 50 millimeters per minute with a power setting of 30%. And this is with the 20 watt laser setting. And you can see it's still actually coming out a little bit darker than what I wanted. So on the next project, I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit to be able to deal with the differences in this type of plywood versus the other plywood that I was using. Also, I want to zoom in real close so that you can see that pencil line and the alignment of the laser. That is exactly perfect alignment. And that's what I wanted to be able to do. And that's one of the things that I'm able to do just using the current position setting that's in Lightburn. As this project is finishing, I'm noticing that it's really a big gap at the top between the line and that first word. So I decided to go to Google Images and pull an image into it which was nothing more than a little chisel. I did change the settings down to 50 millimeters per minute and 25% power. And I'm gonna set this up on the green layer. So that is the only thing that is going to engrave. The center green dot is still the exact position of the laser itself. So that's the only thing that's going to engrave at this point. So this is how you can actually go back and add graphics or add something else. As long as you don't move that laser, you're good to go. You can make changes like this. And I think putting this little graphic in there with that little chisel is the perfect graphic to be able to do for this project. And it was easy to go back and add it after the fact. So they don't think that you can't do that. So now I'll just slide the laser out of the way and show you the finished result. I think adding that was the right thing to be able to do. This looks absolutely amazing. So that little space that I had turned out to be the perfect place for the graphic. Now on the next one, I went ahead, went to Google search and brought in this graphic. The process is you find the clip art, you just go to the Google's image, find the image that you want to be able to do and bring it in. Then I can come up here to the tools and come down to trace image. Once I have the image traced, this is what I'm left with and I no longer need this part. 
Now the first thing you're going to notice, and when I click on it, it has, highlights everything. So it's all grouped together. So I'll come up here to this icon and click on it. And now I can click on individual pieces and I can cut it and get it out of the way because I don't want that and I don't want this part. Now if I zoom in real close and look at the details, I can see that this section looks quite a bit, well, it just looks rough. As far as the rest of the design, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to concentrate just on this section right here and make a few changes. To clean this up, I can come over here to the edit node mode and highlight this section right here. And then I can zoom in real close and I can get rid of some of these nodes. Just highlight the node and hit delete. I'm going to delete that one. That's going to clean that up pretty good. And this, I can actually stretch out. I'll move this one over just a little bit. We'll move that one out a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. That's actually not too bad. And I can do the same thing down here with this one. Make it look just a little bit better. We'll do the edit nodes. And I'm going to swing this around. Bring it out this way. I can take this handle. Bring it over here. Bring it out into this area. And we're going to move this node out more like that swing this in swing that part in just like that we'll swing this handle back around and let's take a look at it doesn't have to be perfect because it is going to be small i think i'm going to come back up here to this one and we're going to go back into the edit nodes and i'm going to pull this handle bring it in a little bit on both of these and I think that'll look better. Yeah, I think so. Now let's zoom out. Off camera, I'm going to take just a few minutes to clean up a few of the other details. Using the edit node tool is a very valuable tool because you can move the node itself or you can move those little handles to change the shape. So after you make the adjustments that you want and you have it looking the way that you want it. I'm going to take and group everything together, which I have done, and then I'm going to take and slide it right down into this area right there. And I want to make sure that that looks exactly the way that I want it to. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Bring this one down a little. Yeah, maybe not. We'll just leave that one right there. And I think that looks good. Now I'm going to make this area cut as a line. And I think I'm going to cut this area as a fill. So we're going to come down and we're going to change this color to a green. And we're going to make this a fill. And then we'll set up our settings for the fill. I'm going to change this and bring it down to about 50. We'll make it 60. And the power, we'll make it 25. And as far as the line, let's just try it the same way. I can also double click on this, open this up, and then just type in the power that I want, speed and power. And we'll do this at um, the 50 and the power will be at 25 and we'll hit OK. So that way this area will do all fill. This will be the lines and I think that'll look good. All right, let's set it up and engrave this. You have this little foot right here. Rotate that down. You see it just touches 
If I needed to make an adjustment, I would loosen this, move it up or down. Once this was just touching the surface, tighten that back, and then we'll raise up the little foot. So we have that done. Now I need to put the laser head right here on my center point to be able to engrave this. And I use a pencil to be able to help align it. I think that's actually real close. Let's frame this now. And I have a guideline here and there. And I think that looks good. So let me grab the glasses and we'll engrave this. From this you can see that in the cut layer window we had two different tool paths. One for the lined engraving and the other one for the fill. And it will take in the sequential order because the line was placed first in that cut layer menu. Then it's going to engrave that first and then move over to the fill section. If you wanted that reverse you could do that also. I also wanted to show you in real time just how quickly that it engraved that graphic and then immediately moved to the next tool path for the fill. I know I'm going to get asked, so I'm going to show you. Yes, it does have legs for this machine, but quite frankly, I often find using the two befores is a good alternative to be able to get the height the way that I want it. And in this case, it worked out perfect to be able to deal with the boxes. Well, at this point, this one is finished, so now I have both boxes that are finished and I think the engraving looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take the opportunity to put a clear uh, polyurethane now onto these boxes and then I can enjoy these boxes for years to come and be able to store these tools safely and they'll be protected. Thank you for watching today. I had a lot of fun doing these three different projects and I hope you were able to learn something. And if you did, by all means, hit that little like button down there and subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot more videos right up here to be able to take a look at and see what you can learn to make your shop experience even more enjoyable. So until next time, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the shop on the next video. So for now, bye-bye everyone. See you real soon.